This is a Zaku, boy. Hey guys, Kakarot197 again. This time with a review of the 1100 scale Blaze Zaku Phantom High Knee Custom from the Gundam Sea Destiny anime series. With the recent release of the Master Great Lunamaria Gunner Zaku Warrior, I thought why not have a look at one of these older Zakus? Because it might be somewhat of an unpopular opinion, but I way prefer the proportions of these old 100 scales when it comes to the Zaku Warriors or the Zaku Phantoms. There's just something about their anime accurateness and their blockiness that really appeals to me. And for Heine's machines specifically, the orange looks really nice. And talking about the really nice color scheme, you won't need to do a lot of painting in order to get this thing color accurate. We of course get the usual mono eye sticker, we get stickers to wrap around the grenades, and we also get white for the backpack. Other than that, the painting you'll have to do yourself is mostly relegated to the insides of thrusters. But there is one funny thing when we have a look at the sticker sheet. We have these four stickers that are left over and that's not because I forgot about them but because this is the same sticker sheet as we got with the Rei Zaburel Blaze Zaku Phantom and they reused the same one for this guy. And these are supposed to wrap around these intake vents on the chest but of course on Heine's machine they're already white. Stickers that were specifically made for this model kit on the other hand are these four marking stickers that are Heine's personal emblem which is also very German inspired. Then something that isn't quite as good on these older Gundam Seed and Gundam Seed Destiny model kits, the seam lines. Yes, this is at the time that they were like trying to hide some of them, like on the top of the legs, they did a really good job uh, hiding them in the panel line, but we still have some pretty obvious ones on the lower legs or on the lower arms. Then on to the accessories, we of course get a standard issue beam rifle with very standard construction, two halves slapped together, the tip goes on there. You will also have to do a little bit of painting. This thing here has to be painted white. Other than that, we have a movable handle so we can hold onto it with both hands. And also one really cool thing is that the energy pack on top can actually be removed and in case you were wondering, you can actually use these energy packs on the beam rifle, but the thing is, they are hollow. So in worst case scenario, should you lose this, you do have four spares. And then it will fit into the hands extremely solidly. But in case that you wouldn't want to use this, you can simply pull this over, turn your Zaku Phantom around, pull down this tab here, and then you can store it onto the back. Then the second handheld weapon that we're getting is the Beam Tomahawk. Here it is in stored mode, but despite having a stored mode, you can't actually store it on the machine itself. It's supposed to go into the shields, but as you can see, there is no hole there. So to activate our Beam Tomahawk, you simply fold this out. This edge here is supposed to be painted white, and then you simply attach the included clear pink beam effect part and there you go. The beam tomahawk does technically fit quite snugly into the hands, but the problem is the ridges on the handle. If you line them up perfectly with the rest of the hand, it is extremely solidly in there, but if you don't, it can be extremely loose. But of course, those aren't all of the weapons. Some of them are mounted on the machine itself. On the side skirts, we have four grenades, which can be removed, but the problem is they don't fit into the hands and we don't get some kind of open hand or any kind of special grabbing hand for these grenades. Unlike the 144 scale high grade, which does come with an open palm hand that can kind of hold on to them. And by hold on to them, I mean you can place the hand like this and put the grenade in it. And then of course we have the big feature of the Zaku line, the wizard packs. This one is the commander type, so obviously it has to come with the blaze pack and it is pretty articulated. These individual pots will rotate around on a peg and then these thruster flaps will also open, revealing some really nicely detailed thrusters. And then we also have a missile pod on top. This part will fold down and this part will fold up, revealing a bunch of micro missiles. You will have to do some painting to get it completely color accurate though. And then finally, this tail flap will also go up and down. 
And even though it was never shown in the anime, as far as I know, the Zaku Phantom is compatible with the Gunner Wizard Pack, should you want to. Then there is one final accessory that isn't a weapon, a small representation of Heine Westenfluss along with some of his, um, important information, I guess. And finally, let's have a look at the articulation of this thing. The head is on a ball joint and hinge combo, but it goes up only a little bit, down a little bit, sideways also only a little bit because these two relatively big pieces clash together. And then we'll of course also wiggle around and have some forwards and backwards chicken movement. Then as with most of the Zakus, once you scalp this thing, you can also move the mono eye. The arms are really nicely articulated. They go forwards, backwards, a little bit upwards on a hinge, and these shields are pretty incredibly articulated. There's a ball joint here and a ball joint here, and then this is kind of a locking ball joint, because what you're supposed to do if you want to get some really crazy articulation is pop this thing out, and then it can go almost anywhere you want. We have a ball joint at the bottom here, and these things will also rotate around. It's pretty crazy what you can do with the shields. For now, I'm just going to move them out of the way. The arm will go up nicely, rotates around below the shoulder, bends at the elbow at one joint, and then the hand is, as always on a ball joint, will wiggle around and do everything a ball joint does. The waist as well is pretty articulated. It will rotate around as usual all the way, but also has some extra forwards and backwards movement, which was not that standard back in the day. And the legs will go forwards pretty nicely, backwards not as much until they hit the back skirt, out only about that far. They will wiggle around about that far on the ball joint, the knees are double jointed and will bend pretty damn far. Then for the feet, the foot guard will move up like that. The feet themselves have the usual hinge and ball joint combo, allowing for some nice forwards movement, nice backwards movement. The hinge will also go side to side, allowing for some pretty good sideways movement and will of course also rotate around. And then something I almost forgot about, these thrusters on the back of the legs will also go up and down a little bit. So overall, I would say that the articulation of the Zaku Phantom has actually aged pretty damn well, with the exception of the single jointed elbow. As always, the inevitable question is, do you want to buy this? And well, for 2,600 yen, I'd say, yeah. I would say, yeah. For 2,600 yen, you're getting a model kit with perfect anime proportions, most of the accessories that you'd want, a really cool color scheme, and just a nice little extra in the form of this pilot plaque thing. Yes, it has its small faults that Master Grace would not have, but for 2,600 yen, there's just not too much to complain about. I would even go as far as to say that when Bandai decides to release a Master Grade Zaku Phantom with the same proportions as the Master Grade Zaku Warrior, that this would actually be an adequate replacement for people who are either on a budget or who are like me and prefer the anime bulky blocky aesthetic. Then for some comparison shots, first of all, here is next to the 144 scale high grade Zaku Warrior, and just look at the difference of those spikes. I gotta say the proportions of the 100 scale are so much better than the proportions of the 144 scale. Then here he is next to Luna Maria's Gunner Zaku Warrior and Ray's Blaze Zaku Phantom. And finally, here he is next to the very slender Savior and Master Great Sword Impulse Gundam. I gotta say, the Zaku Phantom is a pretty impressive looking and bulky machine. Those shields on the side give him extra horizontal bulk, then you have those missile pods from the Blaze Wizard pack that give him that extra height. If only there was another Zaku that I could compare this bulkiness to in 100 scale. And that's all for this video, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters, I hope you all have a great day and I will see you all next time.